Okay, good. And so that's, I guess, the concentration of pH plus. Right. So then I have about pH of three. But something, times, something over one. So it's like a little bit less than three. Okay, good. All right, I think you worked that out. Good. So let's go through that systematically. So we have a systematic approach, but it looks like you worked that out. Uh, there's one thing you, you didn't mention that we want to get in the habit of doing. After I asked you what the pH was, the first thing to say is, well, it'll be, acid it'll be acidic. So I should check the choices to see maybe there's only one acidic choice, and then you can just pick that. So we need to get into the habit. On any acid-base problem, first we should just ask qualitatively, is the answer acidic or basic, and then check the choices. Also, what, what, you know, sometimes you might be running out of time. And you might, not, you, you might, even if you know how to do the problem, you might not have time to finish it. Well, you can at least change your chance from uh, a one out of four chance to maybe a one out of two. In many cases, there's only going to be two choices that are civic or basic, and then you have much better guessing odds. Both throughout the test, most times you probably eliminate it. Yeah, absolutely. So almost always, there's going to be at least one choice that's in the wrong region. So uh, let's see here. Here we have a weak acid by itself. When we're thinking about a weak acid by itself, we should think of the acid reacting with the water. So we can focus on its concentration, which was 0.1 molar. Now this is a reaction that's going to equilibrium, not to completion. How do we know it's only going to equilibrium? Because it's a weak acid. That's the definition of weak acids. Their reactions just go to equilibrium. Um, so we're going to use the equilibrium constant. So. We don't know how much of this we're going to use up. So we have to call it x. So how much do we have left over? 0.1 minus x. And we end up um, producing x concentration here of hydronium. This is the number we really care about. Uh, and then when we write out our Ka, Here's the standard way to write the equilibrium expression with the, react the starting material on the bottom and the products on the top. Water is a pure liquid, so that doesn't appear. So then we use our table to plug in for each of these concentrations. It looks like you remembered the trick. If we keep this x around, we would have a quadratic equation, which we could only solve with the quadratic formula. But without a calculator, you would never be expected to use the quadratic formula. So we can just approximate that this is close to 0.1. That makes sense. Sorry. The reason you know x is really small because the x is kind of, I don't know, I have a for getting y, you know it's really small. Yeah, there's a very interesting reason. The reason we know that x is very small is because if x was not very small, you could not solve this problem without a calculator. And you know that on the test, they're only going to give you problems that you can solve without a calculator. That's a very important principle for the test. Um, you should make any assumption that's necessary to make the problem solvable without a calculator. You know that all the problems are designed to be solved without a calculator. So we should just know that they're never going to give you a problem where x is too big. Um, because this is a weak acid, we can expect that only a small amount is going to dissociate. But you know, there are situations in real life where x is too big to make this approximation. When you took general chemistry, you learned how to deal with those situations using the quadratic formula. They're just not going to give you those situations on the test, because they want you to do it without a calculator. So we would just assume that it's safe to make this approximation and call this point 0.1. Now we can cross multiply. I think uh, maybe you saw here that the easiest way to deal with this is to see that point 0.1 is 10 to the negative 6. said 0.1 is 10 to the negative 1. And then we put these together. You get 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6. And then it gave you a little pause to think about how to do the square root. Well, the first trick is to do this. We can know we can take the two square roots separately. And we just approximate and say, well, we know this is a little bit more than 1. You, you said it was 1 point something. That's fine. So this is 1 point something. 
I don't know, whatever that is. And this is pretty easy to take the square root of. It's 10 to the negative 3. I guess what I would really say here then is we know that x is bigger than 10 to the negative 3. We know that x is bigger than 10 to the negative 3. And x, what does x represent here? x is the hydronium concentration. So we know that the pH We know that hydronium concentration is bigger than 10 to the negative 3. So you know the pH is between 2 and 3. And there should only be one choice between 2 and 3. So you can pick that out. So yeah, we're not expected to do very involved calculations here. Again, notice this whole problem didn't involve any involved calculations. We did hardly any calculations at all besides manipulating powers of 10 and decimal points. And that's what you can expect on the test. This should work fine. Um, as long as this number is already between 1 and 10, its square root isn't going to matter very much. This is the key principle here. Notice that what really determines the pH is the power of 10. What would we call this number? A coefficient? This coefficient here really doesn't make much difference. As long as this is between 1 and 10, it's really not going to make much difference. What matters is the power of 10. So this is what we have to focus on. So what doesn't really matter whether this is 1.8 or 2.8 or 3.8 or even 7.8. Even if this was 7.8, its square root would still be between 1 and 10, and we would still get that the pH is between 2 and 3. So we don't need to bother really calculating the square root here. I think you already saw that. So here we had the acid reacting with the water, and we used the equilibrium constant. All right, and then we would get that we're starting out somewhere around here then. That's our first point. So those numbers that I chose at the beginning, those are too small. That wasn't working out very well. So let's deal with uh, some easier numbers. Let's say we're titrating one milliliter of 0.1 molar acetic acid with 0.05 milliliter sodium hydroxide, and we've added one milliliter of sodium hydroxide. That should come out better. So let's see. First of all, how many moles of acetic acid do we have? Let's calculate how many moles of acetic acid we have. What did you get again?
left over. Right. And then she'll put in some molarity. And then okay. Now let's work on that together. I still probably should pick bigger numbers. Why did I pick such small numbers? I don't know. All right. Anyway. Um, so what do we have here? Because we're combining these two things, we have to put them into moles. We can't really combine them unless they're in moles. Uh, because, uh, or actually maybe we kind of could have, because they have the same volume, but it's safer to put them into moles before we can combine them. 